So as you can tell, we're going to be soldering up some Dean's connectors here today. These are very popular connectors still. They have been getting replaced though by XT60s. Most people like XT60s better. Both solder up very similar. The XT60 has a little cradle you drop the wire into. These just have a flat tab. Some will say this is actually a little bit easier. Uh, the one thing though to be mindful of with Dean's or T connectors, these are also called T for the orientation of the pins. It's kind of shaped in a T. Uh, anyways, the thing to be mindful of, these are in a plastic housing which melts at quite a low temperature. So the trick with them is to apply the heat for as short a duration as possible. And I'm going to show you how that's achieved. Uh, with XT60s, these are in a nylon housing which have a much higher melting point. So it's not as, uh, these aren't quite as difficult in that respect. What I do is I like plugging these together when I'm soldering them and that will just ensure the pins are held properly aligned. Because what will happen is if you overheat a pin, it can become misaligned in the connector, then it's really difficult or even impossible to plug them in or it will come loose over time. As far as soldering equipment goes, just using my AOU 968A plus soldering station. This is a hot air rework station as well. It's a combination. Basically any soldering iron that's around 60, 70 watts will do you. If you happen to have a TS100 uh, soldering iron that so many in the hobby do have nowadays, these work great. As far as our solder goes, I don't cheap out on solder, use good quality solder. I like Kester 44 rosin core solder. This is 0 0.05 inches in diameter. It's a good size for wiring for RC connectors. Uh, it's 60-40, 60% tin, 40% lead. We've got a solder tip cleaner here, just the uh, brass shaving type, or if you want to use a damp sponge. And then of course, uh, you're gonna need your wire that you're soldering whether it's just whether you're putting on wire. In this case, I'm going to be soldering uh, one of these connectors to, the, uh, to an ESC. And the most important part of this whole soldering job, as I've mentioned many a time, is the tinning job of your wire. It's so important to get this tinning right. I say it's 75 to 80 percent of the job. Once you've got that done, it's very easy after that. You're just melting the wire into a tinned end on the plug. So very quick duration of heat is applied to the plug. And a good tinning job, it'll be nice and silver, all the wire strands will be well saturated, and I do have a separate video just on tinning, and I'll link to it below in the description or up there in the little card doodad up in the corner. Again, tinning is so critical. So I'm just going to get the iron heating up and we'll get right to it. Soldering iron's heating up. I like setting the temperature around 350 Celsius, which is about 660 Fahrenheit. Uh, you might like working at a slightly higher or lower temperature. Uh, before getting to the soldering, just want to point out on the Deans or T connectors, they are marked with a plus and a minus, so they are polarity marked. So you're going to have your red wire, generally on the plus side, of course, and the negative on the bottom one. Uh, when you look at these, you notice this this pin is actually offset towards in this uh, orientation it's actually closer to the bottom here and there's a little more room on top that's the side I like putting the wire on uh, you can put it on the bottom no big deal the wire may overhang the side of the connector is all and on the top one here the positive I usually go right on the top if you have quite a bit of finesse you can actually get it in here but it's really close to the other pin then and you've just increased the short potential a little a little bit you know we're going to be putting heat shrink over these so they are protected but it's harder to get in there i just find it easier on the top totally up to you though speaking of the heat shrink whatever you're soldering get that heat shrink on before you start because once you've got them soldered onto the pins generally you can't slide the heat shrink over anymore so there's our two little pieces of heat shrink, just long enough to cover the, uh, um, you know, the solder connection and a bit of the wire. So maybe twice as long as what the actual pin is, roughly. So I'm just going to plug these in because this is the ESC. We're going to solder the male end onto it. Female end is what's on the battery, lower short potential. That's why it's used. So I'm going to plug the male into the female, and I'm 
just going to mount it into a vise here. You, anything that holds it securely. Now, first thing we're going to be doing is just tinning the tab on the Dean's connector here. Just get a nice layer of solder on there. You don't have to go too big, just a nice little bubble. I could actually go a little bit more. And the whole idea is we're going to be melting this tinned wire into that bubble. So again, if, if you want to wait, allow it to cool. Remember I said these are quite susceptible to um, softening the plastic if you put the heat on for too long. And I'm just using a chisel tip on the end. Good heat conductivity. So what I like to do now is I'll usually put a little solder on the tip before I touch the wire. Then you've got good heat penetration between the tip and the wire. Just hold it on to the wire. The wire will melt first, the solder on the wire. And then it will slowly melt into the into the tab on the Dean's connector. That's as easy as it is. You want a nice shiny silver solder when it's done. I'll do the other side. So before we put the heat shrink on, just I'll show you the connectors up close, the solder job. So you don't want you know solder dripping down or anything. Nice silver uh, solder once it cooled, meaning it's not gonna you know it's not gonna be a brittle or a cold solder joint. So we'll just slide the heat shrink over top. And I'm just using my rework. Wand. I've got this set to about 230 Celsius, just enough to shrink the shrink tube, and that's it. Just unplug that now. So I hope that uh, helped you understand how to uh, solder up Deans. Pretty simple. Two tips though, make sure you get your ends tinned properly before you even start and that way you'll ensure that you're not applying heat too long and I should have also mentioned you know if you have to add a little extra flux so it's good about using a good rosin core solder you know there's already going to be flux built in you shouldn't have to add any more if you don't apply the heat too long and boil the flux off but if you did yeah just add a little more flux or even just a little more rosin core solder cheers folks